What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash tales of neckbeards. Alright, this story's called, Witch Beard at a Party. This is part two of my neckbeard encounter. Sorry if my grammar sucks and I'm on mobile, so formatting sucks. Cast, there's Luna, me, I'm 20, I'm a pagan who works at the witch's pot. I have a gothic style and like I said, I'm tall. Lily, my boss slash best friend, she's 23 and pastel goth. She owns the witch's pot. Tyler, my boyfriend, 22. He's the son of a pastor who fell in love with a pagan. Chris, Lily's boyfriend. He's military, six foot six. He's someone you don't want to mess with. Witchbeard, the neckbeard. Last time on the neckbeard encounter. Witchbeard bought five red candles, returned one, then asked Lily for info about me and he read at her when she refused. Story. My town was having a mythical theme New Year's party. We all decided to do Norse mythology. Tyler and I dress up as Loki and Sigyn. If you don't know Norse mythology, Loki is the god of mischief and Sigyn, 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 let's just say Sigyn, uh, is the goddess of victory. Lily dressed up as Sif, 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 yeah, Thor's wife if you go by the mythology. In the Marvel Universe, Thor is dating Jane, but again, Norse mythology Thor is married. Chris dressed up as Thor. We went to the community center where the party was. I see people dressed up like Greek mythology and many more. We're all having fun till Witchbeard showed up. He poorly dressed up as Thor. Now, I get it if you can't afford expensive gear, but his Marvel shirt was two sizes too small and the Mjolnir was by his side. Witchbeard walked up to me. Who are you supposed to be? I'm Sigyn, Loki's wife. Loki doesn't have a wife. Yes, he does. Well, in mythology, Loki has two wives and Sigyn always protects Loki from his punishments. Not in the Marvel universe. Loki is single like Thor. Well, in the mythology, Mythology, Thor is married with three children and Loki is married and has children as well. I smile and walk away from the witch beard to dance with Tyler. We took photos with other people who dressed up as Norse gods and goddesses, including someone who dressed up as Fenrir and Angraboda, Loki's son and first wife. I can't find much about Angraboda, but please put in the comments about her if you do. Witchbeard came up to me. May I dance with my sister-in-law? No but thank you for the offer. I walked to Tyler, but he was in another group photo. <sighs> Sigan, join us. We can't have Loki without his wife. I joined in the photo. We all exchanged social media since they were a fun group. Lily went to us and found a group photo booth. Tyler, Luna, there's a photo booth. Can we do one before we don't see Chris for six months? Sure. We went to the photo booth and took fun photos. We have fun till someone mentioned that a poorly dressed up Thor was taking photos of me everywhere I went. I ignore it, but I noticed it and I went up. Can you please stop following me? It's creepy and I have a boyfriend. You're too pretty for him. So what? He makes me happy. I know for sure that he didn't follow me around and be creepy. I walked off and enjoyed the party. If you want a wholesome ending. During the countdown, Tyler proposed as the fireworks exploded the night sky. Edit if you want to read. Norse mythology lessons so people don't confuse mythology with Marvel. Thor is married to C but has a mistress named Yarn Saxa that gave birth to his three children. And the children are Magni, Modi, and Thrud. Loki is married, and I killed all three of them, or at least two of them in God of War, and it made me happy. <laughs> Loki is married to Angerboda and Sigyn, but Sigyn always protects Loki, including his last punishment. She holds a bowl over Loki's face to collect the snake venom. Loki does have children. Loki's children with Angerboda, Jormungandr, which is actually the name of that big snake thing that is eating its own tail, and if it stops eating its tail, if you see it, it's Ragnarok or whatever. Um, Hel and Frenrir. He gave birth to Sleipnir, which is Odin's eight-legged horse, with Sigyn, Narfi, and Vali. Most of Loki's children are fear. Hel is the goddess of death. Helheim. Ah, that's the realm of the dead. Fenrir is a wolf that is chained up, but once Ragnarok starts, he be free and destroy 
destroys everything in path in his path. Jormungandr is on Earth in the sea, but according to Ragnarok prophecy, Jormungandr dropping his tail is one of the signs of the end of the world. But Segan's children are more tragic than scary. Vali was turned into a wolf, losing his senses and tearing his own brother Narfi apart. Narfi's entrails were then used to chain Loki to his rock. Yikes. I think it's so cool how they teach you some of this stuff when you play God of War. Ah, that game is so good, and I finally beat uh, Sigrid, the Valkyrie Queen, if that, if I didn't say anything about that in a while. And I beat it, and I saw the cool uh, last scene when you go back home with that cool guy that shows up, really shocking. <laughs> All right, this story's called My Mother Almost Married a Neckbeard. This happened in 2002 when I was 12. My parents were separated for most of my life and were never legally married. They split when my mom was still pregnant with my younger sister. After they separated, my mom got into a bad habit of going after men that she shouldn't. While pregnant with my sister, she started dating a man that was a widower with three teenage kids. She dated an alcoholic and a man that had commitment issues. You get the idea. When I was 12, she met this man called Bob. I can't remember how they met. The first day I met him was uncomfortable. He pulled his car up to our gate. We lived on a farm in a town about a two hour drive from Bob's place. But instead of going through the gate to introduce himself, he stood on the outside and waited for me and my mother to come to him. He seemed okay and seemed friendly, albeit weird that he didn't come through the gate to introduce himself until he spoke. Hello there, my name is Bob. It's such a pleasure to meet you. I can't explain what it was that rubbed me the wrong way. I just got a really bad vibe from him, which later I voiced to my mother, but got ignored. It wasn't that I didn't like that she was seeing someone apart from my dad, as I'd only ever known them to be separated. Throughout the next few months, my mother continued to see him. He would come to our our place from time to time, but we would go to his place more often. This was when my mom started noticing more red flags in Bob's behavior. He would start cooking dinner at the exact same time every night, and would eat at the exact same time. That might not sound like much, as it's normal for people to have a routine like that. It's the strictness of this routine that gave the red flag. Regardless if the food was fully cooked, he would eat regardless. He was a bit of a Kevin in that aspect. He lived a 20 minute drive out of town, and when he drove us into town, my mother wasn't allowed to drive, per his rules. He would only allow us to go to the places he wanted to go to. Restaurants, coffee shops, discount stores, etc. There were more things he did, but I can't remember as this was 18 years ago. About four months after they'd started dating, my mother spent the weekend with him and left me and my sister home alone. We were very self-sufficient and were fine to be left alone at that age. When my mom came back late on Sunday afternoon, she seemed weird. And when I asked her what was wrong, she didn't tell me right away. Eventually, she told me that Bob had proposed to her. My first thought was that we would be forced to move to his town, which was something I didn't want, as we'd only moved to the town we were living in three years prior to this. I didn't like my mother, and I sure as flip didn't want a stepdad I didn't like on top of that, but although my mother isn't the sharpest tool in the shed, she had the common sense to see the red flags for what they were and told Bob that she'd think about it. Here's where the story gets creepy. Because my mother didn't immediately say yes, Bob got exceptionally clingy. He started calling multiple times a day, we only had a landline back then, but Bob had a mobile phone, and he'd turn up at the house randomly, hoping to catch my mom doing God knows what behind her back. There were times that he'd come to the house when we weren't home and then later call our home phone and accuse her of being home but not letting him in. There was one day I can remember so vividly. My mom and my sister were at Pony Club and I was home alone on the internet. I heard our dogs barking so I went to the lounge room to look out the window to see what was going on. I saw Bob's car parked at the end of our driveway and Bob was opening the gate to let himself in. I went to the front door 
door to lock it in case he chose to come inside. I went back to the window to see what he was doing. A sensible person would go to the door and knock, but not Bob. He walked around to the side of the house and proceeded to look into the windows to see if someone was home. I could see him through the window, but he couldn't see me because of the direction I was standing in. After checking the windows, I saw him get his phone out and a few seconds later, our home phone began to ring. We don't have a messaging system, so it just rang out. He did this a few more times before giving up and walking back to his car and driving away. He did this a few more times after that day before my mom got the police involved, which made him stop doing it. I didn't see him after that, but I was sure to tell my mom, I told you so. Okay, this gets a lot more creepy when you remember the fact that he lived like over two hours away. Yikes, incredibly creepy. But also, if uh, you propose to someone and they're not like saying yes right away, don't be all clingy on them. Not just because they obviously need time to think about it, because, you know, simple psychology. Uh, if you start smothering them, they're not gonna value you as much. But if you back off a bit, they're gonna want you a little bit more. So yeah, don't be smothery, it's bad. All right, this story's called My Neckbeard Encounter. I don't know what to name this neckbeard, but I have many stories with this neckbeard. I got the courage to post this story since I've been listening to neckbeard stories on YouTube. I'm on my phone and formatting sucks. English is my second language, so I'm sorry if my grammar sucks. Please correct me if you want to. Here's some background. I was 20 and working at a witch nature store. The store has crystals, essential oils, plants, candles, and more items. It was fun to work there till this neckbeard came. I'm gonna call this store the Witch's Pots. I'm calling him Witchbeard for the time being till I figured out what name I should call him. Cast of this story. There's Luna, 20, me. I'm Pagan who loves plants. I have black and white hair. I'm tall, 5 foot 10, unless wearing my boots, then I'm 6 feet. Lily, 23, the store owner, my best friend. She's pastel goth. What does that mean? She has pink hair that she will braid. She She's neckbeard bait. She's five foot five and very innocent. Tyler, 22, my boyfriend, now fiance. He's tall and very fit. He's a pastor's son and we met when his father wanted to protest against the store. His dad is not happy since his son is dating a witch. Witch beard, the neckbeard. He's short and smelly. Has a beard that was unkempt and gross. He was balding and in his 40s. He wears Hail Satan and goth girls only shirts. My kind of guy. <laughs> the story. The first time I met Witchbeard, I was removing Bibles off the windows of the store so people can walk into the store without being uncomfortable. Hello, do you work here? Yes, I'm Luna. How may I help you? Do you have candles? Uh, yes. Uh, let me clear the window and I'll show you the candles. I smile as I put the Bibles in a box and walk into the store. Hello, Luna. More Bibles? Of course. I I set the box on the counter and guide Witchbeard to the candle area. What color do you need? Red. I'm doing a love spell. Okay. I grabbed the red candles and showed him. I want five. I grab five red candles and put them carefully in a small candle box. I walked to the cash register and gave him the price. It'll be $14.64. Cash or credit? Cash. Do you want to join our email list? No thanks. He handed me a $20 bill. I checked the bill and put it in the register. Keep the change. I put his change in the charity jar as I wish him to have a good day. I thought it would be the last time I see him, but I was wrong. The very next week, Tyler told me about his father planning a protest against our store again. Lily emailed our customers about the protest and how our back door will be open if they are uncomfortable using the front door. I don't know why they protest. They preach about freedom of religion and speech but condemned this store. You don't force anything on them, and they are forcing religion on you. I don't know, but I get free Bibles. I give them to Goodwill. Our first priority is our customer safety. We heard the front doorbell. I give my best customer service smile. Welcome to the witch's pot. How can I be at your service? You gave me a bad candle. I'm sure that none of the candles we sell are bad. Do you have the product? Maybe I can give you a new candle. Yes, I do. He shoved the cracked candle in my face. I smile as I walk to the candle area. I grab a new red candle and put it in the box. I rang up the return and gave him a new 
cute candle. I'm sorry, my lady, for my rudeness. I was upset over the candle. I smile and accept the apology. He left, but over three days ago, I had gotten flowers and love notes from him. The week after the outburst, Witchbeard came again. He was wearing jeans, an anime shirt, and a fedora. I wasn't in the store since it was my day off, so this is based on what Lily told me. Welcome to the witch's pot. Where's Luna? I wanted to ask her out. She's off today. Can I have her number? No, sir. I'm not handing out her number. What about her address? No, plus she has a boyfriend. Yeah! According to her, it sounded like a pig in pain, and she was in shock. She told me that this re was in her nightmares. This is the end of the first part. There is more, but I need a name for this neck beard for my stories. Do please help. Damn, I never would have peg pegged him as a weirdo. Get it? Pegged? Pegged? Pegged as a weirdo. Ah, I tried. It was close enough. All right, this story's called Neckbeard Calls Dibs on Me. I'm 22 now, but when this happened, I was 18 and still am neckbeard bait. I was pale and goth, but very nerdy and a huge gamer. A senior year of high school, I was having fun with my best friend, Toxic. Toxic has black and green hair. She wears black and green, hence why I call her Toxic or Toxic Waste. Toxic is related to the neckbeard. He was five foot eight. He's overweight, but not bad. He smells like fish in the hot summer sun. I went over to Toxic's to hang out before graduation since she decided to join the military. Horror movie marathon with popcorn and candy? I brought your favorite, Saw a movie series. Yes, Lucifer is here. Lucifer? Last time I saw him, he was a clumsy kid who couldn't play Foursquare. Ouch, OP. It was a hard game. You hit the ball to other squares. How do you mess that up? Says the one who broke her arm in Red Rover. Are you gonna watch this movie or what? I got the entire series. We set up the popcorn and drinks. Lucifer and I accidentally cuddled up. During the bathroom break, Lucifer and I started talking. We ended up exchanging numbers in social media. After the movie marathon, we were all asleep in the living room. I woke up to Neckbeard yelling at Lucifer. I called dibs on her. What are we, five? We're watching a movie and fell asleep. Nothing happened, and even if it did, it was her choice. I called dibs on OP. You can't have her. I don't remember what he said, but Toxic made him go to his room. Three months later, Toxic and I graduated. Not only that, but I fell in love with a guy named Lucifer who actually proposed three months ago. Toxic is the maid of honor. Ayo. Damn. Too bad your whole relationship is a sham because he called, because Neckbeard called dibs on you, bro. You can't, you can't laugh, you can't spit in the face of dibs. I'm joking, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.